clerk to call the roll to determine a quorum. Elder Person Stefanski. Here. Turner. Here. Vitali. Excused. Grisham. Here. Haas. Here. Keen. Here. Lysak. Here. Ranky. Here. Rote. Here. Eight present, one excused. We have a quorum. Please rise if you are able and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led this evening by Alderman Stefanski. Okay, we'll move to item D. We have one public hearing this evening and I will ask the clerk to read it out. Ordinance to amend zoning code related to certain animal services, rubbish sales, and separation distance for narcotic treatment services. Thank you. I'll turn it over to staff, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mayor. My name is Steve Chair. I'm the manager of planning and zoning. And uh, hearing tonight uh, is three parts to this ordinance. Uh, for well, The first part being animal services, increasing the opportunity within some uh, commercial districts um, to um, allow certain animal-related uses. And the second part being rummage sales. Uh, currently, there's a gap in the code with respect to rummage sales, so we're just filling that gap, and we'll get into that details later. And then narcotic treatment, uh, just reconsidering the uh, distance separation between uh, similar uses and uh, residential uses within the city. So the first part of animal uh, services, there's the, we start out with definitions, expanding upon the, um, the, the definitions. Right now the zoning code covers, um, uh, has, a, has a use for animal boarding, but the other, the other uses are, um, as, as described here, are new uh, within the code. So, but as far as animal boarding goes, the definition is basically sheltering for um, um, an owner's, at the direction of an owner's uh, direction, an animal uh, for compensation. And it excludes veterinary practices. So boarding overnight at a vet is, is a separate use uh, within our code. Animal breeding, uh, just basically mating uh, or birth offspring uh, for compensation. Uh, animal shelters um, are, are nonprofit uses such as rescues, um, uh, other nonprofit welfare types of societies uh, where animals are, um, are boarded and sheltered and cared for. And then animal training is the use uh, to teach animals um, and to react to specific uh, person's commands for compensation. And then uh, with respect to the uh, allowance of, of uses within the, uh, within the code, this is the proposed table. Again, right now our existing code uh, animal boarding is, is covered within our existing code, but it's only allowed as a conditional use in the light industrial zoning district and a permitted use in the I-2 or indu heavier industrial district. So what we're doing here is expanding the allowance of limited use into some of the other commercial zoning districts like C-3 and C-4 uh, with, with certain um, criteria um, down below. Um, animal breeding is not going to be allowed within our code. We're specifically calling that out here. It's uh, None of these cells are populated. And then animal shelters, um, that'd be the nonprofit types of uh, welfare societies, are allowed as conditional uses in the industrial zoning districts. Animal training, again, expands into um, uh, more of the commercial zoning districts and, and then also the allowance in the uh, heavier um, industrial district. With respect to the limited use criteria, um, with respect to um, animal boarding and training, those types of uses in commercial zoning districts must take place indoors and no noise from the activity is allowed to be audible from a lot used for residential purposes. The difference is in an industrial district, while you know animal boarding and training are allowed in industrial, um, the difference is that there could be an allowance for outdoor operations, but again, no noise from the activity being audible for, from a residential uh, lot. And then the conditional use, basically indicating for, um, for the animal shelters, noise from the activity may not be audible from a lot used for residential purposes. So those are the conditions that go along with that use table up above. The second part of the ordinance for rummage sales, again, the gap in the code, we're filling that gap, basically allowing rummage sales within the majority of our zoning districts, and then defining rummage sales as the sale of a tangible good or goods uh, from a, a lot used for residential purposes. And it's within a calendar year, you're limited to um, a certain nominal, uh, not to exceed dollar amount. 
But more importantly, the more enforceable part of that, the easier to enforce part of that is that not more than five days. It doesn't have to be consecutive days. That could be sporadic days throughout the year. And then part three for narcotic treatment, the third part of the ordinance, we currently have our existing rule within the ordinance now is that such uses are allowed in the commercial C4 and then both industrial districts as a limited use. The, uh, there's a separation uh, clause or separations distance from lots that are zoned residential or with residential purpose. Uh, lots zoned P for park, schools, or other narcotic treatment services. So you have to have that, currently you have to have that 250 foot uh, uh, separation between these, this criteria. The intent of the new, uh, and that's what the map currently looks like. If you were looking at the existing regulation, the orange spots here, the orange um, areas are uh, where one could locate another narcotic treatment service based on the 250 foot separation from residential parks, schools, and other services. The stars are the other um, uh, narcotic treatment establishments, um, Highway 100 National, and then on Theo Trekker, just west of Highway 100, between 116th. And then, so the intent of the new ordinance is to more or less allow, keep the allowance within the same commercial and industrial districts, however, increase the separation from 250 to, to 1,000 feet. And we feel that um, this would better balance um, such uses within the metro area. Um, and then also uh, the, offer, the ordinance doesn't specifically eliminate all possibility of uses within the city uh, with a thousand foot separator. It does reduce the number of eligible locations within the city, but there are still uh, about a dozen or so properties on the north, north end of the city where uh, such uses could locate. So the Planning Commission has reviewed this ordinance and they recommended approval um, Common Council tonight at public hearing and then the ordinance has been published and we've received no objections to date. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Mr. Chair, are there any questions from the members of the Common Council on our public hearing? Mr. Mayor. Other person Keen. Um, Steve, does this include pet shops that sell um, animals, cats, birds, dogs? It, as long as they're not breeding animals from that location, they'd be fine. But a pet, pet shop or a pet store would be an allowed use, uh, like a, a retail use. Thank you. As long as they're not violating these other, you know, regulations. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions from the council? Mayor Devine. Alderperson Reinke. Uh, Steve, in the, let's see, the five consecutive days for rummage sales, or are they five times a year? Five times a year. Five times a year yeah. they can hold them. Yeah. Five, five days in a year, in a calendar year, that you could hold a rummage sale. But five days, right. they can do it for five times? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. why I want clarification, because okay. sometimes there's a problem. Understood. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the council? Mayor Devine. Other person, Grisham. Going back to the five days, that would be if somebody held a rummage sale, it's Thursday through Sunday, those counts as days, not an event. Correct? Correct. Correct. Okay, yes. thank you. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions from the council? See none, are there any questions from the members of the audience? Okay, seeing none, we will close our public hearing and we will move on to item E. This is a public participation where the council may receive information from members of the public during this 30 minute period. Each speaker must announce their name and address to the council, sign in at the podium and limit their comments to one statement of no more than five minutes. Does anybody wish to address the council under public participation this evening? Hi, good evening. Uh, Amy Rose Murphy, 1520 South 76th Street. I sent an uh, email earlier to Rebecca and Dan and I just wanted to read it to the entire council. I hope this message finds you well. I'm writing to express my concerns regarding the limited hours of our city hall lobby, which has been in effect for an extended period. As an engaged member of our community, I believe it is crucial to reevaluate and consider returning to a more standard eight to five business day schedule. With the upcoming spring election, it is important to address this matter promptly. The limited hours create challenges for residents who may need to vote in person early or cast their ballots through absentee voting. 
I am concerned that these restrictive hours may hinder citizens who prefer in-person voting from exercising this option. The community's frustration is evident when the conversation turns to present limited hours at City Hall. Numerous residents have expressed their dissatisfaction with the continued change of a typical operating hours. Returning to the standard eight to five schedule would not only meet the pressing requirements tied, up, tied to the upcoming election, but also contribute to increased overall satisfaction within our community. I respectfully urge the Common Council to thoroughly consider and implement the necessary measures to reinstate the customary business hours at City Hall in the lobby. Thank you for your attention to this matter and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to address the council under public participation this evening? Could you, could you turn your microphone on, please? Thanks. Okay. I, my name is Tiffany Stark. My address is 6414 West Burnham Street. I am a West Dallas resident for life. I am also a acute mental health social worker, and I'm here before you to discuss my concerns with Granite Hills. Um, I was at all of the meetings from day one when this uh, facility was up in the zoning committee and I was in support of Granite Hills. Our community is in need of mental health services and there was a lot of things that were brought up once the community had a say. There was concerns that they did not want Granite Hills to be the community hospital or the county hospital since it closed and they also were very concerned about discharge planning that people were not going to be discharged into the street. So one of the issues um, I think was very well you know, brought up that people knew that Granite Hills was going to be a partnership in the community taking people that needed a bed, which we all, I thought, knew. But word on the street, um, a lot of people in Milwaukee County are very upset and they did not get that memo. They feel that Granite Hills should be the county hospital, which I disagree. I do agree that it should be a community partnership, but there's some misconceptions uh, from what I hear. Also, the other big issue is lack of beds. One of the issues I never heard when we were discussing this that a facility would not have a psych unit. All the psych units that I am familiar with all have restraints and seclusions. And that is a last resort, but it's necessary. It's necessary for three reasons. One, one when someone's psychotic and they're not doing well, they can be a danger to themselves and be hurt. Also, other patients can be hurt and staff. And the issue is, Granite Hills, for some reason, does not have a restraint and inclusion room. And one of the reasons why people do not, well, they don't have beds, they don't have staff. People are afraid to work there. And that is a big issue. And like I said, I have never heard of a psych facility. I work on an inpatient psych unit that does not have that. I don't know why they don't, but it's a big factor of why people aren't being able to uh, become employed. They don't want, they're afraid. So that's the reason why there's a lack of also bed availability. Also, back to the discharge planning. I know when we had sat there and you guys made the vote, I thought there was some kind of provision that was put forth that there could be a permit pulled um, if some of these measures weren't being met. Uh, I can't speak on specifics because of a HIPAA, but I do know that there's been very poor discharge planning especially when vulnerable populations have case managers in the community and Granite Hills is not coordinating with these case managers for a smooth transition where people are, are being discharged to the street um, or especially when it was very cold if people can get frostbite and people are being discharged with case managers and letting them know at the last moment in the day that they're gonna discharge the patient when they could have coordinated that with their case manager to be more safe and more continuity of care. So there is, I'm very disappointed. I have a, a lot, I was very excited about Granite Hills and I think there's a lot we, you know, that can still happen, but there's a lot of things that I think a lot of people don't know what is going on. And we need to look at this because you know there is vulnerable people and we need to make sure they're safe, especially when we had that Arctic air and people were left out in the cold. 
and people get frostbite. Uh, and so I just hope you guys hear this and I appreciate you guys listening, but I hope there's something that you guys can do to look at, look into some of these things, find out why there's not a restraint in seclusion room to increase staff, to increase beds, to get the people help because there's people that need mental health treatment and they don't have a place to go because there's no beds. Thank you. Thanks for your comments. Uh, does anybody else oh, answer my own question? Hi, Chad Halverson, uh, 1028 South 77th Street. I uh, just wanted to say thank you to the current committee. You guys have been doing a great job leading us the past four years. I want to thank the city, all the workers, maintenance, police, fire. You guys are awesome. I've lived here for 11 years now. Um, you know, I had a community where I came from, which is Kenosha, but I, I never knew community until, like, I sowed my uh, roots here. Uh, and that's why I'm running for Alderman for District 2. I really like what this city has done in the time I've been here. You know, I know the history of the city, too, and kind of how, like, we're, you know, scrappy young fighters and we come out of the dirt and, you know, whatever people say of us, like, we're awesome. I love this freaking city. Um, I, I believe in public safety. I believe in, you know, traffic calming. Like, all these things to, you know, make that kid have a better future here. Like, that's why I'm running for Alder. So, yeah, Chad Halverson, vote the number four, Chad, WI.com. And uh, thank you, Council. Thanks for your comments. Does anybody else wish to address the Council under public participation? Yes, uh, just once. So, there you go. Okay, thanks. I'm Doug Gendron. I live at 2261 South 60th Street, and it's on the block, which also has Longfellow Schools building. And I was here talking last week, um, last month, about, about the subject of uh, the redevelopment of Longfellow School, and I appreciate the chance to bring it up again. Um, the plan that was offered to us um, was rather sketchy, limited in details. Um, they, they were talking about building a new building, an eight multifamily unit building along 61st Street, um, in addition to converting Longfellow School to apartments, and also the, the small uh, building along Grant that uh, was a more recent vintage into apartments, and I think the total number of apartments proposed was six, 51. Um, and one of the other citizens brought up the fact that they're only showing 45 parking places on, on the, the property. Uh, the, the planner who um, presented some information to us uh, explained that by saying that not everybody drives a car, which is true. Uh, some people have two cars in the family, though, and um, I think it's safe to suppose that there will be at least 50 cars in that property, uh, probably uh, if they're all parking on, on the property, probably more like 60 cars, um, which would then require some of the overflow to go on neighboring streets. Uh, they were showing a couple of driveways, one on 60th Street and one on 61st Street, and um, the drawing didn't show whether or not they'd be using the, the alley that runs north-south from the school property to the east-west alley that runs between 60th and 61st Street. I suspect that that is in the, uh, well, if not in the plans currently, that is in the future if this development uh, goes through as planned. Um, there, there was somebody at the meeting also who said she knows a better, a better use of an old building like Longfellow School, and I, I think that some of the people who live on that block would be willing to uh, at least hear the city's plans, see a more 
thorough development of, of the plan before the city goes forward with it um, and at least uh, be offered the opportunity to vote yes or no or at least uh, to offer their own suggestions for what possibly could be uh, good modifications to the plan that you have already. Uh, the planner said that the developer thinks that in order to make this profitable, they need to build that eight unit apartment, uh, multifamily apartment building there along 61st Street. Uh, this despite the fact that to remodel the school and, um, and make it habitable for people, that they would be receiving funds having to do with, um, and forgive me, I, I don't know for sure, uh, it might have been historic preservation <clears throat> as well as low income housing. And yet, despite the fact that they'll receive that money and of course uh, profits from those operations or the sale of them, they still need to build another eight unit apartment building along 61st Street. Uh, that is at least questionable and ought to be supported by some kind of data. If the city has it, I think it would be well to share it with us. Also, this project seems pretty far along in the proposition stage without having had a traffic study that shows how this is going to affect traffic on 60th Street and 61st Street. The, uh, the driveway in and out off of and onto 60th Street was proposed apparently as a right way, right turn in, right turn out only. Uh, that requires some kind of a design that discourages people from sitting on 60th Street trying to turn left into that into that development. Uh, I don't know how that's going to affect pedestrian travel in that area, also, but at least it's going to take up more parking places from 60th Street for the purpose of that driveway. And uh, similarly, the driveway on 61st Street will be, uh, will take up some parking places. And in order to accommodate extra traffic on 61st Street, it seems like parking would have to be restricted to one side of the street only. Uh, it could be that you could cut out on one side, say on the east side of 61st Street, you could cut out the, the grassy area between the sidewalk and the curb cut down all those trees and um, sir you're you're at your five minute limit so if you can kind of conclude your comments please okay Thanks. well as you can see I, I'm, I'm against the idea of overcrowding that property uh, and furthermore being a resident nearby I would like to ask you to um, review with the people who who were there last week who some of whom didn't express an opinion what are you doing and why and also, uh, I'd like to see some green space there. Um, and um, I don't know if there's anything else I wanted to say, but I appreciate the extension and thanks for listening to me tonight. Thanks very much. Yeah. Does anybody else wish to address the council under public participation? Good evening, Council. Uh, Sagar Talani, 7059 West Stute Place in the beautiful 4th District. Um, I just want to thank Alderman Lysich for his 40 plus years of service on the Council and also as the President. Um, and just wanted to introduce myself. Uh, I've lived in West Dallas for about eight years uh, with my wife when we accidentally happened to buy a house from um, my mother in law's uh, childhood friends' uh, kids who were selling their house to uh, move to other cities for jobs and then ended up in Shorewood. But uh, we were very fortunate to end up at that house, uh, a beautiful colonial um, on that block. And we have uh, loved West Dallas so much that uh, by the end of this year, my mom will be moving here. And I was really hoping to uh, put her at the complex uh, by Longfellow, but we'll see about that. Um, so in the meantime, um, I've, Love this city, love everything we're doing, and uh, want to be part of uh, moving this city forward. I've had the pleasure of being on the Capital Improvements Committee and 
doing a lot of the work, uh, updating our website, being on the focus committee to get our new logo, make our city um, look, uh, look more modern. And uh, I would uh, love an opportunity um, to uh, talk to our citizens and uh, serve you on uh, the Common Council. So again, Sagar Tolani, uh, vote the number four Tolani, T-O-L-A-N-I at gmail.com is my address, so thank you. Thanks for your comments. Does anybody else wish to address the council under public participation? All right, seeing none, we will close public participation and we will, let me stop my timer here. Um, item F is our standing committees. They will be meeting during recess. If you are here for a license or a permit or something that uh, summoned you here for city business, please take a look at the bottom of page one or ask one of us when we break for recess on uh, which room you should go to when we break. Yes, Alderman Haas. Right, and just again, the administration committee and economic development are here in the council chambers. Yes. Yeah, just because that's different. Thank you. Um, moving on to item G, the mayor's report. Just a couple things I want to touch on since we last met. Uh, a few weeks ago, our, our city engineer, Melinda, and I were at Irving Elementary talking to students about uh, traffic safety. One of their classmates, unfortunately, was hit by a vehicle last year on 84th and uh, National by the skateboard park. And we were talking with them with um, going over all of their ideas, how we could make that intersection safer. So I want to thank Irving for that opportunity and thank all the students that wrote me letters. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is last Monday, the West Dallas Police Department had their community partnership meeting here in the chambers. I want to thank everybody who attended and thank the department for putting that on. Uh, pretty much everybody sitting up here was there. Um, last Friday, the West Dallas Women's Club held their Queen for a Day luncheon where we got we um, were at Mount Hope Lutheran Church and uh, took care of them. I know we always like serving Alder Person Ranky as a member of the Women's Club and then our other Alder women were actually serving, not getting pampered, so maybe they can stagger that next year and be pampered instead of serving. But that's always a fun event. I wanna thank the Women's Club not only for that event but also for everything that they do for the community. Uh, earlier today, I had a coffee with the mayor listening session some of you may have seen on the news that one of our, two of our local businesses actually were hit by a vehicle at 2.50 in the morning, a hit and run, and it caused around $50,000 worth of damage on 68th and Lincoln, um, Peace of Love Bakery, and then the Anthony's Appliance store next door. Both are, are getting uh, renovated, so I know it's a lot easier to buy a cup of coffee or a cake than it is a new appliance, but. If anybody is in need of an appliance, I'm sure they would love to see your business. Uh, they are both great um, community partners and, and community small businesses. Uh, two other minor things, I just wanna take a minute to recognize and mention that February is Black History Month and remind everybody. And then I also want to announce that uh, earlier today, a lot of you may have seen on social media, but that long awaited demolition of the Burger King has begun and it might be done by now, so. Uh, that does conclude the mayor's report. Move to item H. Are there any reports from the alder persons? Mayor Devine. Alderwoman Keene. Um, Friends of Ophala Park will be holding their annual Empty Bowls um, event on Saturday, February 17th from 3 to 6 p.m. Uh, they ask that you also bring a non-perishable non food item. All proceeds and uh, food collected will go to West Dallas Food Pantries. It is a awesomely delicious event with probably about nine different types of soups that um, you can pick out. You're gonna have baked goods there. The uh, West Dallas West Milwaukee Kids Symphony is gonna be there to play some delightful background music while we enjoy our soup. So if you can make it, it's a great cause. and. Uh, urge you to show up. Thank you. Any other reports from the altar persons? Mayor Devine. Oh, that was a tie. 
Um, I just want to acknowledge that our Alderwoman Dana Keene uh, has a birthday, but it's not on our timeline, and we won't be meeting before that, so I just want to wish her a very happy birthday. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Alderman Turner. So now that Alderman Weigel's gone, you're going to be picking that up? <laughs> All right. Yeah, that, thank you for sharing that. That was a, a Realtor.com study that, that came up with those results. Yeah. Any other uh, Alderperson's report? Mayor Devine. Alderperson Reinke. As chair of the Board of Health, I want to share with everyone that the uh, the West Dallas Health Department has received a special, special congratulatory letter from the state, the Department of Health Services, congratulating our health department on attaining a level three health department. A level three health department is the highest one can go in this state. So. I have to thank our director, Bob Leisha, and also his staff, and also the Board of Health for basically helping to attain this special, special um, uh, award. I thank him uh, for all his work and his staff uh, do a marvelous job. And I think I'm a little prejudiced on this, but. We're one of the unsung heroes in West Dallas, as far as I'm concerned, because we're helping our community to be safe and well. And really, this is spe a special, special accomplishment for our community. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alderperson Reinke. Any other reports from the Alderpersons? Mayor Devine. Uh, Alderman Lysak. I move for approval of the minutes of the January 16th, 2024 Common Council meeting. Second. There's a motion and a second. I think we're going Grisham by a hair. Um, <laughs> any corrections or changes to the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'd say if the minutes are approved, then we have nothing understanding committee reports. Mayor Devine. Alderman Lysak. Um, relative to the consent agenda, is there any alder person that would like any item on the consent agenda acted upon separately? Seeing none, I would move for approval of the consent agenda as presented. Second. There's a motion and a second by Alderwoman Keene. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Mayor Devine. Alderman Lysak. I move that we stand in recess until conclusion of the committee meetings. Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We are in recess.